Good morning. Welcome to worship today. Welcome to those listening on the radio and those viewers that will be watching later on this week. A couple announcements to highlight before we get started. Um, for those of you that may usually attend the 915 service, or the 930 service rather, for this summer it's starting at 915. And you guys probably noticed that as you came in the gathering space, it wasn't nearly as crowded as it usually is. So that's been a good move already, I think. Today at the 1030 service, this service, we will be receiving new members. And next week at all three services, we will have a guest pastor preaching for food for the poor, and we will be taking up a noisy offering at that time. There's details about these announcements, and the schedule for the week is in the bulletin. You could take a look at that yourself. Other than that, we're ready for worship. Would you please stand for the confession and forgiveness? Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, abounding in steadfast love toward us, healing the sick and raising the dead, showering us with every good gift. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Just and gracious God, we come to you for healing and life. Our sins hurt others and diminish us. We confess them to you. Our lives bear the scars of sin. We bring these also to you. Show us your mercy, O God. Bind up our wounds, forgive us our sins, and free us to love. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. The Apostle Paul assures us, when we were dead in our trespasses, God made us alive together with Christ, nailing the record of our sins to the cross. Jesus says to you, your sins are forgiven. Be at peace and tell everyone how much God has done for you. Amen. Let us join in our gathering hymn, Praise to the Lord the Almighty, 859.
of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be with you all. And also with you. <clears throat> In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Let us pray. Merciful Lord God, we do not presume to come before you trusting in our own righteousness, but in your great and abundant mercies. Revive our faith, we pray. Heal our bodies and mend our communities, that we may evermore dwell in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading is from the 8th chapter of 1 Kings, reading verses 22 and 23 and 41 through 43. Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the assembly of Israel and spread out his hands to heaven. He said, O Lord God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven above or on earth beneath, keeping covenant and steadfast love for your servants who walk before you with all their heart. Likewise, when a foreigner who is not of your people, Israel, comes from a distant land because of your name, for they shall hear of your great name, your mighty hand, and your outstretched arm. When a foreigner comes and prays towards this house, then hear in heaven your dwelling place, and do according to all that the foreigner calls to you, so that all the peoples of the earth may know your name and fear you, as do your people Israel, and so that they may know that your name has been invoked on this house that I have built. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the first chapter of Galatians, reading verses 1 through 12. 
Paul, an apostle, sent neither by human commission nor from human authorities, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead, and all the members of God's family who are with me, to the churches of Galatia, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to set us free from the present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another gospel, but there are some who are confusing you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should proclaim to you a gospel contrary to what we proclaim to you, let that one be accursed. As we have said before, so now I repeat, if anyone proclaims to you a gospel contrary to what you received, let that one be accursed. Am I now seeking human approval or God's approval, or am I trying to please people? If I were still pleasing people, I would not be a servant of Christ. For I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel that was proclaimed by me is not of human origin. For I did not receive it from a human source, nor was I taught it, but I received it through a revelation of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thank Thanks be to God. God. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the seventh chapter. After Jesus had finished all his sayings in the hearing of the people, he entered Capernaum. A centurion there had a slave whom he valued highly and who was ill and close to death. When he heard about Jesus, he sent some Jewish elders to him, asking him to come and heal his slave. When they came to Jesus, they appealed to him earnestly, saying, he is worthy of having you do this for him, for he loves our people, and it is he who built our synagogue for us. And Jesus went with them. But when he was not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to say to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. Therefore, I did not presume to come to you, but only speak the word and let my servant be healed. For I also am a man set under authority with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my slave, do this, and the slave does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him, and turning to the crowd that followed him, he said, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. When those who had been sent returned to the house, they found the slave in good health. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from our crucified risen and reigning Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Now, somebody commented not too long ago so I could, they could stand for a few more jokes during my sermons. So, uh, you know, I, I'll do that. But you've got, you got to understand, I need a little positive reinforcement from you. I mean, if, if I'm going to tell a joke, you've got to laugh. It's just, now, I told this joke to a friend. Carol, you're the queen of jokes. She tells them at the senior luncheon, and they're awesome, but she won't share them readily with me. So I, I'm never sure if I got a good one or not. But anyway, um, I, I said this joke to a friend, not Carol, but somebody else recently, and, and they said, that was clever. Okay. So anyway, this may not be that funny, but laugh anyway, please. I need the encouragement. A bishop, of all things, appeared before the gates of heaven and knocked on the gates for admittance. The great doors slowly swung open, and St. Peter stepped out, blowing a golden trumpet. When he had finished the welcoming concerto, he turned to the bishop and said, Greetings, brother of the faith, God awaits you. Recovering from the awesome splendor of this type of welcome, the bishop quickly replied, Brother Peter, I am ready to meet God. And he started to step forward to enter the celestial portals. Wait, my brother, said Peter halting the bishop with an imperiously upraised palm. Before entering God's kingdom, you must first prove that you are worthy of the honor. How can I prove my worthiness, asked the bishop. You must show that at least once in your mortal life, you displayed outstanding courage. Can you recall at least one unquestionably brave deed? The bishop's face brightened as he said, yes, Yes, I can. I remember going to a tyrant's palace where I met him face to face. 
He was surrounded by bloodthirsty armed mercenaries. But ignoring this fact, I told him that he was an evil despot, a vulture who fed upon the bones of his own people. He was a persecutor of Christians, a hateful man. I then spat at his feet. <laughs> well, exclaimed Peter, I am impressed. I must agree that that was an extremely brave feat to perform, considering the armed guards and the tyrant's hatred of people. Yes, my brother, you are worthy to appear before God. But please tell me, when did all this happen? Oh, replied the bishop casually, just before you blew that trumpet. <laughs> it's clever. Come on, Bob. Give it up. <laughs> the epistle, and if you don't leave, I'll get better, I swear. I'll get... <laughs> Poor man. <laughs> you want to sneak out quietly, and I drill. <laughs> The Epistle and Gospel lessons this week deal with two very different approaches to worthiness. Jesus is visited by the friends and neighbors of a faithful centurion who wanted his slave healed. When Jesus starts heading in the direction of the centurion's house, the centurion sends another party to tell Jesus to turn back around. Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only speak the word and let my servant be healed. I am not worthy. Okay, I think there's some hardcore humility going on here, but he is worthy. I mean, obviously, because Jesus offers the healing, right? He was heading in the direction of the centurion's house to provide the healing needed for the servant. Jesus did not look upon this person and see a piece of scum. Instead, he sees someone he loves, someone he is willing to die for, someone he is willing to listen to. And then also, from the opening verses of Paul's letter to the Galatians. In this letter, he begins with all those wonderful, wonderful niceties and platitudes from other congregations. But then he gets to the point. After five verses, he says, I'm astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Ouch. You see, the context is this. The Galatians have heard from other preachers who live in that area who were trying to convince the Galatians that if they were circumcised, they could gain God's favor. To gain God's favor is to gain salvation. To gain salvation is to feel a sense of worth. And apparently some had started the practice, a practice that quite obviously caused a great deal of pain for the adult men in the congregation. Try not to visualize this, guys. I'll lose you at that point if you do. How much would God admire them for their sacrifice? It kind of, kind of makes sense. Here's the thing. These Galatians think they're unworthy too. But they also think they can somehow make themselves worthy. A little surgery, a few weeks of pain, then they'd be worthy. Then who could question them standing before God? The thing they forgot is the essence of the gospel. God's favor and love are not up for sale. Our worthiness cannot be bought, and our unworthiness can't be purged by doing some good things. Thing is, I get that, don't you? I mean, I get it, I understand that. I'm profoundly aware of my own unworthiness, my shortcomings and my, my, my failures. And if I let those demons loose, oh, I'll get overcome with all the disappointments I have with myself. Also, I can then fall into the trap of trying somehow to overcome it all. You know, if I pray more, if I pray longer, maybe if I pray in Latin, who knows, maybe the Roman Catholics had that right. A few more hospital visits, more early mornings, more late nights. As if doing any of that could take away my own brokenness. And if I crawl out of the hole that is my unworthiness, it won't be by myself. I can't. I can't do it. Neither can you. And that's the whole point. We don't need to. In God's eyes, you are precious. It is God who makes us worthy. Our worth comes from being God's own children. God shows us our worth by giving us the gift of his son, and his son shows us how worthy we are by dying on the cross for us. 
You may have noted in the lesson, the gospel lesson, that it was when the centurion realized his own unworthiness that Jesus marveled at his faith. The elders run to Jesus and make the appeal to help the centurion, for he loves our people, and it is he who built our synagogue for us. But it was not until Jesus heard the centurion say, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, that Jesus declares, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. Why? Because all the idols were removed. All the pretensions, fat fears, and doubts. Faith does not mean believing that God will help you if you toe the line. It means believing that God will love you and help you in spite of your inability to toe the line. Faith isn't about being righteous or worthy. It's about recognizing our own unrighteousness and unworthiness. Now, we know this. At least we do intellectually. We know that we're saved by grace through faith. We know that we never deserve God's love. We never earn God's approval. But sometimes we fail to take that final spiritual step. And this is very important. It's a step of seeing, as the centurion did, that God loves us in spite of our unworthiness. God loves us in spite of our own unworthiness. Now I'm going to correct myself. When's the last time you heard a preacher do that from the pulpit? I began this meditation with a pearly gate joke. And I think Carol will agree it was mighty good. There are literally hundreds of these things, and all of them have the same part. A point at which Peter says, what did you do to deserve coming into heaven? And the real joke is, Peter would never ask that. That would be absolutely foolish. There's no point. As Paul wrote in the book of Romans, there is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks after the one true God. And he quotes some history. He talks about Abraham, the father of all nations, who was not justified by his actions, but instead by his belief, by his faith. Salvation not of works, but of faith. Thing is, that reality doesn't lend itself to a good joke. Believe me, I've looked. And why? Because I think that's what's hard for us as people. We want what we do to matter. We want to pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps. We want to pay our way. We want to show other people that we are responsible and worthy. We're like Rodney Dangerfield. We want some respect. But the good news this day is this. We can drop the pretenses. We can drop the worry about what others think of us. And instead, exchange that for what God thinks of us. In my way of thinking, that's really what counts. You are precious in God's sight. Amen. Please rise. With the peace of God which passes all human understanding, Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us join in our hymn of the day, O Praise the Gracious Power, hymn number 651.
Would the congregation please be seated? And I'd like to invite at this time all who are being received into membership to please come forward and stand at the altar rail if able. Excellent. I invite the congregation to follow along in this order of affirmation of baptism. You'll find it on page 234 in the four part of your books. Dear friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism and for these people, one with us in the body of Christ, who are making public affirmation of their baptism. Let us pray. Gracious God, we ask your blessing upon these, your servants. Be with them and be with us in this time as we unite in this community of faith. In your gracious name, we pray. Amen. I present these new members who desire to make public affirmation of their baptism. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for these sisters and brothers whom you have made your own by water and the word in baptism. You have called them to yourself, enlightened them with the gifts of your spirit, and nourished them in the community of faith. Uphold your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism, and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, to reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce all the devil and all the forces that defy God? If so, answer, I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? Would the congregation please rise and join us in the recitation of the Apostles' Creed? Do you believe in God the Father? I believe, I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to death. On the third day, Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of everlasting. Amen. You have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper? to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth? If so, please answer, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do. And people of God, do you promise to support these sisters and brothers and pray for them in their life in Christ? If so, answer, we do, and we ask God to help and guide us. We do, and we ask God. If you're able, would you please kneel? Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in these new members the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm their faith, guide their life, empower them in their serving, give them patience and suffering, and bring them to everlasting life. Amen. You may stand. And would you please face the congregation? Let us rejoice with these sisters and brothers in Christ. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God 
and proclaim the good news to all the world. I think it would be quite appropriate to acknowledge this very powerful and important moment in our family of faith while you coming into our membership with a round of applause. I would invite you to return to your seats and we will continue with the prayers. Please stand. Rejoicing in the good news of God, come near. Let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Merciful God, we pray for your church. Keep us faithful to the gospel that we might serve your beloved world with glad and generous hearts. Today we pray especially for Pastor Larry Kaniga and Hope Lutheran Church in Faustoria. Lord, in your mercy. You have created a world teeming with life. Bless creatures of every shape and size. Bless rivers, lands, seas, and sky. May all your creatures show forth your praise. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the people of every nation, especially for the weak, the vulnerable, and the oppressed. May justice and compassion flourish in every land. Lord, in your mercy. Wherever Jesus walked, he brought healing and forgiveness. Give us faith to call out to you in his name, seeking healing for all in need. We pray especially for those whose names are listed in the bulletin, along with Brittany Fisher, Shelley Afield, Jeremy Brose, Marilyn Heth, Stephanie Afield, Becky Klein, Sandy Mitchell, and Martha Vance. We pray for the graduates, Grace, Matthew, Adam, Aaron, Kylie, Ryan, Stevie, and all others who have completed their course of study and are moving on to new chapters in their lives. We ask for your blessings upon Jason and Haley Maurer as they were baptized this past Thursday evening. We pray for the families and friends of Bonnie Reese and the family and friends of Lois Phillips. We ask for your blessings upon those who are being received into membership today. May they find this to be their home in Christ Jesus our Lord. We pray for those in care facilities, those bound at home and all caregivers. We ask for your blessings upon the military. And we offer our prayers for all others whose names we place before you this morning. Lord, in your mercy. Hear we pray for this congregation, its pastor, its assistant, its staff, its leaders, and its mission here in this community. Keep us faithful to your call and give us grace to be the presence of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks for the saints whose lives show us what it means to live in you. We remember those who have recently died as well as the many saints of old. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O God of compassion, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your great mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let's extend a sign of peace to one another.
Let us pray. God of mercy and grace, the eyes of all wait upon you, and you open your hand in blessing. Fill us with good things at your table, that we may come to the help of all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you, lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ invites you to a place of honor at this banquet. Welcome to the feast. You may be seated.
Would you please rise for the blessing? <coughs> May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, as a mother comforts her child, so you comfort your people, carrying us in your arms and satisfying us with this food and drink, the body and blood of Christ. Send us now as your disciples, announcing peace and proclaiming that the reign of God has come near. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Let us join in our sending hymn, Lord Dismiss Us With Your Blessing, hymn number 545. Go in peace, proclaim the good news. Thanks be to God. We at Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Marion want to thank you for joining our worship service today. We hope today's service was both uplifting and has enriched your spiritual life. And we would certainly welcome and encourage you to visit one of our services in person. Our services are Sundays 8 and 10.30 for the traditional worship and 9.15 for the contemporary worship service. Thursday evenings at 7.30 we have our praise service. And the fourth Sunday of each month at 1.30 our gentle worship service. We also want to thank you for your continued support of our television ministry. Won't you help us continue spreading the gospel of Christ by sending your donations to Emmanuel Lutheran Television at 241 South Prospect Street in Marion. 
no gift is too small and will help us continue our goal of spreading the word of Christ. So until our next broadcast, God be with you till we meet again.